Hey everybody and welcome to the Naughty Mac, the free life drawing classes brought to you by Schoolism and Lightbox Expo. Alright, so today's topic is all about dancing and let's get straight into this, shall we? So how this is going to work is you can ask questions. You can ask questions in our Lightbox Expo Discord, which is uh, you can find your way by looking to the bottom right hand side just to the side of me uh there discord.gg slash lightbox expo or you can go to slido.com uh hashtag 90 mac 90 mac stands for 90 minute art challenge and that's what we're going to be doing today so we're going to be tackling uh five one minute poses five two minute poses five five minute poses and then five ten minute poses and then we're done all right, so here we go. Hold on to your hats. We're going to start right now with one-minute poses. You ready, Kay? Yes. Awesome. Here we go. Oops. One-minute pose starting right now. Hmm. I want to use a different brush today. Yeah, doing that too. Okay. Oops. I wasted probably 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, literally 30 <laughs> seconds just doing that. Okay. Uh, that's another kind of reason to always kind of remind people as well that... Um, these first drawings, especially these first drawings, it doesn't matter what you do. It just matters that you're putting in the effort, um, and then that's it. All right, this is just warm up. Okay, so there we go. First one minute pose done. Let's go on to the second one minute pose. Right, those are quick. It's just to help us get warmed up, really. So, one minute starting now. I put this in here especially for for us, Kay, because this is like the last place we went before the pandemic, I think. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. I love the fluidity in all these dancing kind of poses. You talk about line of action and class and stuff, everybody. Well, this is like pure line of action every time. All right, and that's it. Ready for the next one? These things go fast. Let's go. Next one minute drawing, oops, starting now. Now this one, it felt like a dancing vibe, right? Like this person's dancing in the hallways or something. So, um, but actually I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe the person's just posing. Oh, it totally looks like a dancing pose. Right? Yeah, that's, that's what I kind of thought. Try to add in different kinds of people, different age groups, different body types. Can't just all be drawing models every day. Fifteen seconds left. My goodness, this is challenging. It's great. Okay, there we go. So next one minute pose. Isn't this one awesome? That's neat. Right? This is going to be really fun. Some really fun varieties. Mm. 
I'm so used to using um, tone to sketch. So today I purposely am using the pencil tool so I will force myself to be a lot more linear. Because like I've said in the past, everybody, uh, life drawing is very much like going to the gym. You can do whatever exercises, you can work on whatever you want. Right? Just keep going to the gym. That's, that's what I'd say. Today, it's all about linear art for me. Okay, there we go. Next one. Wow, you're so fast. You draw a face and everything. I got just like the outline. All right, I got to turn it up. That's the other great thing about drawing with other people, right? Like, uh, I'm sure people are perhaps, hopefully, thinking the same thing with me and going... How'd Bobby draw so fast and blah, blah, blah? Because right. I'm looking over at Kay's and I'm like, how'd she draw so fast? <laughs> Bobby and like, oh my God. Somebody keeps texting me too at the same time. All sorts of obstacles in the 90 Mac. Oh, 15 seconds. And this is such a great pose too. So carefree. I love how kids dance. All right, there we go. Love it. Love it. You got the expression and everything. Okay, so we're graduating to two-minute poses now. Here we go, everybody. Two-minute poses starting now. I don't know about you, Kay, but I really love this subject. You know, like, look at all the variety that we got in, in just... This is the sixth pose, I believe. Mm -hmm. I love the um, references you got, Bobby. It was really fun to pick out. Squirrels is next week, everybody, by the way. And Squirrels got some personality. They're pretty fun. I was taking a look at the various, um, looking for various photos and such. It was really, really fun. drawn this person a little too small. There's a question from Joshua. What is the longest amount of time you ever spend on a finishing piece? <laughs> for work or for, for yourself? I don't think I mind either way. <laughs> oh, well, for work, I, I done like a month on like just like a piece, just back and forth with like iterations from director <laughs> yeah that's really long a month is really long but it's more like a, what do you call it like a, <clears throat> like a presentation kind of piece yeah presentation piece it's a bit more important all right first two minute pose is done production poses or production pieces yeah they go by so quick you know, you usually don't have that much time. So two minute pose starting now. I've been deleting them by accident. Oh no, are you kidding? <laughs> what? 
I just deleted it by accident. Oh no, don't delete it anymore. I wanna... <laughs> we gotta keep those. These are your drawings. By the way, uh, Masay Seki entered the YouTube chat. Go, Bobby and Kay. It's awesome oh, to see hey. you two draw together. <laughs> Miss you. This whole week has been nothing but like streams. Tomorrow, actually, tomorrow, can we give a little plug about Eric O? Eric O, his uh, interview is happening tomorrow. He's shortlisted for the Oscars, and uh, so we have an interview with him. But the extra, extra awesome thing about this is that he'll be live in the chat as well for the, um, the interview. So you could chat with him live as you watch his schoolism interview tomorrow. It's a really wonderful film. It's so impressive um, on the Oculus. Okay, all done. So I didn't even finish the pose here. Shoot. No. I was I just that. uh, busy talking. Okay, two minute pose starting now. Now we probably have a better idea of what can be accomplished in, uh, you know, in the time given, right everybody? So think about that, make your adjustments. I know I'm making mine. Think about the speed that you were going at last time. Think about the speed that you feel like you should be going at this time. There's a question from Alexandra. How to get your poses so uh, fluid and flowy? Mine looks a bit more stiff and, and blocky. <laughs> yeah, you let go. Let go and um, it's all about the flow and the rhythm of what you see. You know, a lot of gestural drawings, it's, uh, it should be expressive, capture the emotion rather than like um, perfect angles and stuff like that. And then you build on that. I'm okay. taking notes. I'm taking notes. And I love your gestures. I generally, I think of, like, I'll kind of picture these uh, lines of action and then draw shapes around it. Um, but also, if I may, I'd love to give a little plug to my sketching course. I have a speed sketching animals course on schoolism.com. And there you can uh, sketch with me and all sorts of, and learn all these different techniques that I use for sketching. All right, and we're done. So there we go. Third two minute pose. This goes by real quick already. Fourth two minute pose starting now. Oh, this one's awesome, baby. <clears throat> oh, I'm glad you like it. This one is like scary to me. I'm not too used to um, perspective, but that's exactly why I chose it. So I want to play around with mm -hmm. some forced perspective. Yeah, I think one good thing to think about is that you're not making perfect pictures you know, you're studying, you're analyzing anything that you want to improve on. Exactly. You don't have to capture the whole um, 
pose as well. You could, if you wanted to study the arm, study the arm. But it is great to capture everything. I know, especially like really nice poses, right? Like you just really do want to capture everything. Something to consider afterwards is also like maybe you want to come back to some of these sketches, some of these drawings, and put a little bit more time in there. That's Absolutely. totally fine too. Totally. It's all about um, learning, growing, learning, all that good stuff. It's all about trying to do as much as you can in the last 30 seconds that we have. <laughs> Holy smokes. It's only watching these. That one is fun. Okay. Let's go on to the next one here. This one is the last uh, two minute pose. Beautiful. This is like, uh, this is flamenco dancing, isn't it? Or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Seems like it. A flamenco Bobby, you know how? You know, if I had my good shoes, I would show you. I would I'd put on a show. But uh, I don't, so I have to use your imagination. I think for the uh, five minute poses, I'm gonna switch to a different brush and different approach. I love the drawing. Oh my goodness, I forgot to put on the timer. Oh. I, um, okay, let's shave a few seconds off that. So you, everybody's getting a bit more than two minutes for this one. Hooray! <laughs> There's a suggestion from Steph of uh, Eris for another 90 Mac is maybe to do something with Olympic sports or javelin fold. Oh, mm -hmm. shoot. Olympic mood. That sounds like a great That's idea. a great idea. Can you slack me that suggestion so I don't forget? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and there's such great different um, types of athletes too with different body types, different gestures, different tendencies. That sounds great. I think what could be interesting is like the different muscle groups uh, people have, for example, like swimmers or uh, maybe people who throw like those, <laughs> those spears or something, you know, like those poses. Yeah. All right. We're going on to five minute poses. So the first five minute pose. Starting now. Are you gonna to attempt to do color again? I will always attempt to do something, even if I fail. 
I was thinking of doing the same thing. I was like, I want to do some color this time. I want to try to like, hopefully, we'll see, but um, stylize more. It's harder to like life draw and think about stylizing at the same time for me. Oh, yeah, that is hard. That's tricky. Oops. Did you guys uh, dance before? Uh, maybe we met at a dance. You do? Oh, <laughs> we met at a Halloween yeah. dance. I used to dance a lot, actually. Before. I used to have my own dance troupe. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So Kay has uh, the serious dance skills. What I hear. <laughs> yeah, I rely on my enthusiasm to get me through. Oh, Bobby's got natural dance skills. He that's, won. That's what he we won. call it. <laughs> yeah, dancing, um, competition. What? A dancing style. Hey, yeah. Uh, thanks. I'll get you back. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, again, it was really because uh, my enthusiasm got me through. You know, yeah. like sometimes people got like just their expression on their face makes them an awesome dancer. <laughs> like their moves are crazy all over the place, but then they got this like face on and you're just like loving it. <laughs> yeah. I think that was me. I just had that face on. Yeah, you have commitment, like you yeah. have ambition, you're a good dancer. No ambitions, you know, you just got to let it go and just have fun. But then if somebody told me, hey, do some dancing, I'd be like, ah, I can't, I don't know. Kind of like the freestyle rap battle one time. <laughs> freestyle rap session on the Lightbox Expo Discord one time. There was it? Wow. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was freestyling with them. I don't, I don't know how to freestyle, but my enthusiasm carries me through. I remember, like, maybe Patricia, you you asked me about it afterwards, and I was like, "Oh shit, how'd you know?" <laughs> I was there. I was there oh. with Tansa and Lisa. Oh, there. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh right, yeah. I remember. You came in a little. Kofi after. dropped in there as well at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got too many people, and I was like, uh. <laughs> Why did I miss that? My goodness. I think you're asleep. It was in the morning. It's like we in, in the morning. You have still somewhere a schoolism rep, uh, <laughs> which we build, but yeah, Don't maybe worry, on the, when in the light box real life one we can. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Can re -enter. Yeah, on the big stage. Not me, but I would love to see somebody do that. That'd be fun. I think everybody would just leave. And then I feel bad. <laughs> like, what? Ah, what is this? I can't do it. Oh my gosh. I think I was going on a 10 minute pace because time's up. Okay. Ooh. This is a big failure. And it's a good lesson, too, for me. Okay. Next one. Five minute pose. 
starting now. This one was yeah, inspired. Yeah. You know where I got the inspiration for this, Kay? Where did you get it? From the show we've been watching, or we watched. Amazing Race? No. Um, <laughs> cheer. Amazing Race. Oh. Wow. Right? We were watching that the other, I think like last week. It's a reality show on cheerleading. And, uh, yeah, so I was like, oh, this, this is really cool. Really feels like she's just flying through the air. Someone in chat is asking, uh, what type of drawing pads are you using and programs? Excellent question. Uh, the program that we're using is Magma Studio. It's a free software that you can use. You could go to, you see in the corner of the screen, everybody, you can see it says magmastudio.io. And that's the program that we're using to sketch together at the exact same time. And I got to tell you, like I was saying before, it's really, really inspiring sketching with somebody else, especially uh, somebody that doesn't do what you do or um, is better than you, you know, that kind of stuff. It's so inspiring to and so educational to be able to sketch with somebody like that. So you could go to Magma Studio. Everybody can go to Magma Studio right now, .io, and just maybe bookmark it so that you can come back to it. Um, but yeah, you could invite your friends, you could start a board for free, and then you can give that link to your friends and then they can join in on that board and then everybody's sketching together. Really like, you know, instead of hang out and doing sketch sessions together or even the classic drink and draw, that kind of thing, it's on a whole new level with uh, Magma Studio. There's actually voice as well. If you get the subscription, you can do voice calls and stuff. You can talk to each other while you're sketching just using Magma Studio. But the yeah, subscription believe, is paid. Yeah. yeah, I believe they just launched like the art spaces, which is really cool. Yeah. I haven't checked it out yet. So yeah, I got to check that out too. Um, because the art spaces is really neat. You can see who's on the boards that you created, right? So like you're bored, you're, you, you got nothing to do. You look on the, your Magma Studio boards and then you can see, oh, somebody is, you know, so-and-so is online and on this board that we were using last week. And then so you can just instantly kind of come on and hang out and have somebody to sketch with. I think that's going to be really cool. Thanks for giving me the excuse to make that little plug. Because <laughs> it is really neat. I, I was just looking at it last night. Um, so I got to look at it a bit closer later today. Try it out. Yeah, but people are really excited. I see someone is one of the best updates yet. And oh, nice. Really happy about it. Well, the team has been working super hard on this new update. So it is a big update, everybody. Definitely worth um, talking about and checking out. Also, did I mention it's free? Because <laughs> it is. We just want people to all, you know, encourage each other to sketch with each other, be with each other, especially during these crazy times. Mm -hmm. Bring people together. You know, what people can do is they could tune in for these, um, these life drawing sessions and then uh, do it with your friends, just like how Kay and I are doing it. Do it with your friends. So you keep each other committed, you know, like a workout buddy. 
All right, five minutes. The second five minute pose is done. I wish I had like 10 minutes on each of these poses almost. Yeah. Okay, ready? Here we go. The five minute pose starting now. This is the one where I'm like, all right, this I think might be easier. It <laughs> should be, right? Because for sure. It's just the back pose. You want to do that <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this one I was thinking is a good one to think about stylizing, designing, if if people are interested in that kind of thing, especially if it if you're a bit more advanced. Um, you know, easier poses can be great exercises or great subjects for advanced thinking, it, it, advanced challenges. Uh, there's a question from Slido from Anonymous. When you work on a project, is this how loose your sketches are? And do you show these to your director or would you refine them um, or keep them loose? Oh, no, these are very loose. These are like warm up before you do your serious stuff. Mm -hmm. So that it, like, so that the freshness, the flow of what you're doing when your life job carries through your work, like when you're actually doing it. I feel like these are the kind of sketches that directors want to see, and these are the sketches <laughs> that artists don't want to give. Oh my God! Yes. Right. Oh it's like I don't want to. I don't want to give in these sketches. They're too loose. But then directors will be like, "Just do something quick and loose, and let me just see, and then we can move on." No. <laughs> it's like the I ultimate. A fully rendered piece. Exactly. Like I want to just, I just need an hour more on it, and then I'll send it to you. Cause nobody can see my shitty stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm spending so much time on these pants, and they're all black. What am I doing? Let me just cover this up. About two minutes left. One minute left. Yeah, this new subject makes me feel better. <laughs> it's like I'm getting so much more done than the other ones. The you know, like the reference, the subjects that we sketch as well, they make a difference. I, I 
actually sit there and I think about the the order of the uh, the subjects that we sketch every week as well, you know, and the the images. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not random. All right. Awesome. So here we go. Fourth five minute sketch starting now. Shoot, I gotta plug in my laptop. What the heck? <laughs> wow. Forgot to plug in my laptop. Okay, here we go. Four and a half minutes. This is a real cool pose. Is this like the stuff you wanna do? But you break your toes when you try. <laughs> this is what I think I'm doing on, you know, in that dance competition. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally different in real life. In reality. What what type of dance do you like uh, to do? Oh, I like all sorts. Um... <laughs> it's a hard one. Modern dance is always cool. Um, I used to do samba dance. It's really fun. Mm. I don't know. There's so many. Do you like to dance, Patricia? Yeah, the only dance I think I, I did, uh, I'm sure you did quite okay, uh, was uh, the thriller dance from. Uh, oh. We, 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 yeah, we, we uh, in, in when I lived in Belgium, we had um, uh, like our final class, we were seniors, and we have to like do a little performance. And um, one of my friends, like, uh, he has this. Uh, a uh, sister was really into dancing and she had like a whole composition about how to do thriller. And uh, she taught like the whole class and uh, we performed that with like costumes and everything. It was real fun. <laughs> I don't think I can do it anymore, but it was real cool. <laughs> we did it at the day and it all worked out. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's great. Is it online somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we actually filmed it, but for some reason the cam was uh, n not recording or something. And we, we watched it all together once back and then for some reason it got erased. Oh, but, uh, oh no. no, we don't have it anymore. We have it in our memories and that's the most important. <laughs> that's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. That's awesome, though, Patricia. Okay, so we got a minute and a half left. Just about a minute and a half yeah. left. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Uh, yeah. I gotta figure out a quicker method. I just was really into the very contrasting tones in this pose. Got all caught up. But again, everybody, it's it's really it isn't about the pretty pictures. It's about showing up and just doing uh, the exercises. So if you're doing these things and you're like, ah, eh, my drawings feel like they could be better. That's great. That's totally fine. You're doing a great job. Those are all very normal thoughts. I noticed someone in chat. Whoa, Kay went for the face. <laughs> oh, right, shoot, that's awesome. <laughs> Jeez, you see? 
It's so inspiring. Trying, trying different stuff. So inspiring, Kay. Yeah. You're so inspiring. It's like, I mean, let's keep up. I got oh, my Anthony thing. I got my Francisco thing. is in the chat. What? Hey, Anthony. Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Get out of here. What? Artist, designer extraordinaire. If you like um, Marvel movies, if you liked Black Panther, if you liked Baby Groot, if you liked a million things, you you actually like Anthony Francisco and you didn't even know it. All right, looks like we're done. That is so cool, Kay. Okay, you got me so inspired. All right, enough of this black and white stuff. There we go. <laughs> Number five, just Ooh. in time for color. Well, that's beautiful. Number five of the five minute sketches. Here we go. <clears throat> oh my gosh, where do I start? Uh, grab some white, grab some orange, and just start knocking it out. Anthony, if you ever want to join on the 90-minute uh, workout, reach out, buddy. Reach out. It'd be cool to see your, your life drawings. And to have people uh, draw with you, that'd be awesome. There's a question in Slido from Anonymous. Uh, which artists were your biggest influences that feel that helped uh, shape your style? Oh. <clears throat> I have a, <clears throat> I have a bunch. Yeah, I have one like right up here, which is um, one by Chaos Dara. Boom. <laughs> 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 well, of course, my biggest people. inspiration um other people see other people Bobby <laughs> and uh, like definitely Sargent was up there Clint is up there for me um Walter Everett is up there uh, Peter DeSev Carter Goodrich Nicholas Nardoy uh Claire um, Wendling Claire. I remember when I first discovered Claire Wendling's stuff in, in uh, high school. That was, or not high school, sorry, in, uh, I want to say college. I was so blown away. That was the rest of my semester, is just gobbling up Claire's amazing stuff. Yeah, for real. I miss Claire. She's been hiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so many artists just went in hiding during the pandemic and just like incubate. Yeah. Too much noise out there, you know. You just want to create something good. Those folds look so complicated. <laughs> the, way, or the way she holds it. And, uh, yeah. wow, you guys are doing amazing at it. Oh, thanks. 
I'm just copying K. No, just kidding. But. Oh, well, you're, you're going to go downhill if you copy me. <laughs> Already butchered her face. <laughs> I like to have uh, overlapping brush strokes sometimes for drapery. Kind of helps as a little shortcut. Mm -hmm. Someone in the Discord uh, mentioned for subject matter uh, that could be interesting is Victorian fashion um, and just make a series out of picking a time period to focus on oh. clothing or the history maybe a little bit. Oh my oh. God, that's such a good one. I love that. Thanks for that suggestion. Did I start the timer or is it already up? I'm so confused. I'm sorry, everybody, because like the timer doesn't actually make a sound for K and I, but it does make a sound for the YouTubers. Um, let's put two minutes, because I do feel like we haven't done five minutes, right? Or maybe we have. Either way, you've lucked out. You got two more minutes, everybody. And I'll try to be a lot more diligent and consistent. It's okay. Don't do that. At least this gives me a little bit of time to design the face a little bit instead of just copying. There's a question where they can send their sketches. Well, maybe you have a good answer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so great question. Um, all you want to do is just, you could post them online right, Twitter or um, Instagram or whatever, and then just hashtag it uh, 90 minute art challenge. Okay, so on the bottom left hand side, you can see the hashtag there and you can just do that. And then we'll see them. I'm constantly uh, looking regularly. For I them. love seeing last week's, there's so many good entries. Oh, awesome. All right, so that's definitely uh, time's up. Why don't we go on to the next one here? This next one is another beautiful photo. But I don't know. I have a feeling it's going to be complex to get it all down. All right, here we go. This one is the first 10 minute sketch. Okay, so just five more sketches, everybody. Five more, and you're done. Oh, those ruffles. I love those ballerina shoes. I would just love to own one, but uh, not really do anything with it, but just to watch. <laughs> so pretty. So have them and wear them occasionally around the house. Is that what you want to do, Patricia? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're good, like, snack-eating shoes. I could picture them, like, you know, wearing them on a sofa while you're eating your chips. Just kidding. 
but they do look very comfortable. Like, I know they're not comfortable. That's what I hear, anyways. Oh, yeah. They're just, they look they're like just slippers athletes. to me. Ballerinas are real athletes. That's what, uh, what I remember from Terrell's um, webinar uh, workshop, uh, that horses are basically ballerinas because they also have the touch on their tippy toes and that's mm. why they make those movements uh, while running. That's so good. Yeah, I remember Terrell saying that. I never really thought about it, right? And then I started thinking about it and I started looking it up on the internet, like on YouTube, and then I started getting just nothing but like videos suggested to me of uh, farmers and stuff um, reshaping and fixing uh, the hooves of of horses and cows, and I was like, what kind of crazy rabbit hole did I just get into? It was kind of fascinating. <laughs> okay. There's a question from Slido from Polar Owl. Uh, are you drawing figures based on the structure or more, or more focused on the shapes and the negative spaces? Kind of depends. Kind of depends on, for me, it depends on the pose. Yeah. Totally. Certain poses will say certain things to me and be like, this one is about this. Yeah, I toss back and forth between like focusing on shape, focusing on um, energy, like the emotion of the pose, and anatomy, all of that rolled up into one. And then you just try to do your best. That's why this really is like the ultimate um, exercise right because you can work on all sorts of things you can work on any of those things that we've been saying A uh, question from Slido again. Do you guys um, like to listen to music while drawing, or what do you have on on the background? <laughs> <laughs> this is when we're like polar opposites of each other. I like dead silence, <laughs> <laughs> and K. Uh, well, it's a party every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my favorite is absolute dead silence my second favorite is like an educational uh book or like audiobook or podcast oh i like that too I remember when we were in Paris a while back, we were doing a gallery show. Uh, we've done this a few times where we'll, we go to Paris and we actually, we have a gallery show planned, but we have no paintings, Patricia, right? And then we go to the place and a month early and we start making the paintings. And it's the most like stressful thing sometimes. 
uh, but we would listen to a lot of audiobooks while we paint and draw. We listen to like almost all of Game of Thrones that way. But yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, listening to stuff while I work, generally. Because I, uh, there's a lot of um, email type of things these days as well. And even when I'm not uh, actually writing the email, like during the stream, I'm thinking about all the emails I want to reply to and what I'm going to reply Oh my right, as I'm drawing, so it's harder when you got um, a TV show on or whatever. Sometimes replying to emails is just hard by itself, <laughs> let alone trying to think of what you're going to say while you're drawing. Two and a half minutes left, everybody. In the first 10 minute pose, this one, I really liked this, uh, this first pose. In the Discord, everyone prefers like lo-fi on the background. Is what I noticed uh, oh. while while working. Uh, yeah. m myself, I'm as well more of the silent or podcast. Uh, but if I have like a project, like a uh, something uh, that I will need to have like my spirits up, I always refer back to a, a TV show, and I have that like in the background. Uh, it's called like white collar. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why okay. I'm, I'm always referring back to that and it's uh, it's about art heist uh, he, uh, oh it's a very old show but uh, I like it like white it's collar crime that. in other words yeah yeah he is this famous art forger uh, say so and then he yeah he, he will go through this like adventures and uh, yeah I think it's just fun to have it in the background yeah. I'm curious about that show now. Yeah, I like those kind of shows. I've seen, there's something like that on uh, Netflix where it's like famous heists or whatever. It's interesting. Sometimes I like to watch true crime. So. Mm. <laughs> and then Bobby would be like, what are you watching? Another show uh, a friend recommended me, but it's not something I watch while working, but uh, it's called Dexter, like the new series just oh, yeah. went out. That was a good one. I was really surprised. <laughs> First yeah. time she pitched it to me, I was like, what are you watching? But uh, yeah, Dexter is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a special show, <laughs> but it is nice. Yeah, that is a special show. Did you finish the whole thing? No spoilers, yeah, yeah. though, just in case. No, I don't know. We keep, we keep it. Keep it there yeah, we, we watched that as well. Finished it. Okay, it looks like we're done. So first 10-minute pose, all done. Let's go on to the next one. So if you like drapery, <laughs> you're loving this session. Here's a crazy one. That's a lot of ruffles. A lot of ruffles. 
there's another question in Slido uh, from Polar Owl. Besides practicing gestures, anatomy, um, what would be another application for figure drawing skills? An oh, uh, well, character design, um, storyboarding, you need it uh, just as a prerequisite. Same with designing characters, a lot of what K and I do. Um, uh, my goodness, it's almost like everything, I, I would say. Even environments, a lot of times, like Nathan Fowkes, right? Amazing, sought-after environment, environment designer, uh, heavy with the life drawings, right? So he, he does that for a purpose. Like he, um, when you draw a tree weird, nobody says anything. They just go, oh, okay, it's a tree. When you draw a person weird and you draw the eye off or something like that, and everybody goes, that person looks messed up. Right, so it, I like that kind of aspect of it where you're drawing something that everybody is familiar with. They all know when it looks weird. <laughs> so it's a little bit more challenging that way. But also, uh, just to kind of dribble on, uh, textures, right? When you're doing life drawings, you're starting to learn more about textures as well. You're starting to learn about anatomy. Um, you're starting to learn about how to draw things within things. So what I mean by this is you can't draw a person without drawing in the muscles and the bones in there, but you're drawing those muscles and bones within the drawing of the person. I mean, we generally we don't draw actual muscles and bones and then paint a uh, purse on top of that. And being able to draw things within things, that pertains to so many other things. Right? Say you're drawing a bag that has groceries in it. Well, now you're able to do that better because you know how to draw something within something else or how to think about it like that. Mm -hmm. Hair can be related to things like grass, right? Uh, it very much kind of grows very similarly, where from far, it looks like a mass, and then from up close, it doesn't. It looks like individual little tiny, tiny little bits. How do you deal with things like that, right? You can go to life drawing for those kind of things. And then we're not even getting into lighting and color and all this other stuff. So it, it's really just chock full of um, some million things that you can learn from life drawing. Like I draw creatures. I mean, you look at my portfolio, it's just full of creatures. Why am I drawing people? <laughs> well, that's the key. This is the key to being able to draw things that don't exist. Kay also, like, she's amazing at people, but also, like, she helped design the Cheshire Cat and the White Rabbit and everything for Tim Burton. And without knowing how to draw people, um, structure, and all that good stuff, it wouldn't be possible. I also want to mention Anthony uh, Francisco, his comment, also drawing figures help to see rhythm and gesture, especially doing quick sketches like these force you to see relationships and shapes. Boom. Thanks, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Always so helpful. Even when you're not on the stream, you're still like giving awesome <laughs> things. So thank you so much. You got to join in on the stream next time too. <laughs> wow, this face looks horrible. Let's get rid of that.
We have about four minutes left. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, everybody. There's a question from Slido from Jimmy Monstro. Is there anything you tend to avoid drawing, things you don't like? Like eating vegetables for uh, <laughs> drawing? <laughs> Uh, Maybe you like your vegetables. Lobby. There's things that I don't like, but I like eating my vegetables. So whatever I don't like, I end up trying to figure it out and try to draw it. So like yeah. people, for example, um, like I could draw people, but I generally like drawing animals more. But because I know that I make sure I draw my good amount of people. Um, vehicles. <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh really? <laughs> but I don't not not like drawing them. I like drawing them. It's just more of a challenge. Yeah. Because eventually you gotta do some vehicles for work, and you're like, all right, let's do this. You could catch the pattern here. You know, it's like we both drift towards things that will remain challenging. I think. Once it's not challenging, then it's not as much fun. No, actually, no. Sometimes it's really fun because <laughs> you don't have to put in a lot of effort and you do something awesome and then you're like, oh, shoot, that was great. Life drawing definitely became a lot more fun when I got better at it, when things started to actually look like things. Um, then it got exciting for me. So Case and Bobby's kryptonite would be throwing a vehicle at you and trying to <laughs> master that vehicle. Yeah. Absolutely. But it would be a cute vehicle, <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three seconds, two, one. And we're done. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that's so nice. such nice <laughs> colors, Kay. Thank you. Okay, third ten minute pose. Right? A little challenging, a nice little warm, fuzzy feeling for this one. As mm -hmm. we get into the third. 10 minute pose. Okay. Try something different here. Oh, 
one color that'd be Oh, laying down. Laying now down. I gotta commit to some color. <laughs> Now that you said it out loud, I'm a little nervous. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Such a sweet pose as well. Right, that's what I was kind of thinking. There's a question from Anonymous, if you guys have any art book recommendation. <laughs> art book re recommendations. Um, Everything James Gurney and... Um, that's, yeah, James Gurney's great. Nathan Fowkes also has a lot of really great books out there. Instructional. What was that book that you got recently, Kay? That um, we had to, you had to get somebody from China to bring it back. Oh, it's just by this artist named Killian N. How do you spell the last name? Do you know? Killian N. G. I'm gonna say. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I got to check it. Oh, it's very. Uh, Moebius like. Yeah, I love his stuff. Yeah, it's different. You know, he has his own flavor, but I that's kind of like the easiest way for me to describe it. There's a question uh, from the YouTube chat from Paul. Uh, Bobby, any plans for an art book for your own uh, Imaginism art book in the future? Uh, yeah, you know, it's been a while since I put out a book. Last year I said uh, I wasn't planning on putting out anything. <laughs> so maybe this year I'll, I'll do a book. I've definitely done a lot of art since then. And uh, a lot of stuff people haven't even seen. So maybe. What about you, Kay? <laughs> oh, I think I was thinking of the back burner. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think uh, that's, that's one everybody would be interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I'm just kidding. I'm just busting your chops. <laughs> Always with the chops. There's a question for Kay. Uh, I'm amazed for how quick and how accurate your coloring is. How is your approach? And do you have some prefix swashes for this session from Max Vera? Um, what was the last part? Sorry. If you have prefixed uh, swatches for the session, so if you have picked your colors before the session. Oh no, no, this no, this is like. I could tell you, Kay doesn't even want to see the images of what she's going to be drawing. Like uh, I asked her, and she's like, "No, I'd rather 
not and I'd rather just be surprised so yeah you're really seeing like um, the first attempts here <laughs> uh, yeah my process is a bit I'm always going to say it's intuitive but that's just from years of uh, painting and you know going to life drawing as well and then I I would just focus more on what I want to focus. Um, yeah, that's a hard question for me to answer. <laughs> what is the process? In the beginning, it was definitely linear. Like I'm just focusing on linear and shapes and direction and flow of the energy, things like that. And then this one, I'm just kind of combining them. And getting the, not necessarily likeness, but just you know, just enjoying life drawing, just enjoying observing wherever. It, it definitely is better to have a more methodical like approach, like how a body, you know, how he speaks and how he breaks it down. But yeah, some days it's hard for me to do that, to break it down. I, I, I'm very wild <laughs> in my approach. I I feel like you're you're like uh, having an approach is good for teaching. Yeah. But like watching you paint and stuff, I feel like that's one of the things that um, really attracts a lot of directors and such to your work because there is this like, how did she do that? You know what method? And then the next thing is like totally different or whatever for the next project, and it's a constant like. How is she doing that? What is she doing there? I don't get it. Oh, all right. I guess we <laughs> got to hire her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant trial and error exploration. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It like I don't I don't think it is, but I think it it just kind of like uh sometimes you'll I'll show you something and then you'll be like make it more and then you just give me this descriptive feeling kind of word you know make it more cool make it more eerie or whatever I'm like how do you do that and then finally you come over and you're like you know kind of like this more cool and then you just kind of do it you know what I'm talking about I'm not good with my descriptive word because what Bobby's doing <laughs> no I'm just saying all of a sudden she just makes it freaking cool and I'm like how did that happen You know, there is a lot of intuitiveness in your um, process. I, I also think it comes with what we do, like as concept artists, you're always um, pushed to explore and, you know, be really creative in your approach and your imagination and everything. Um, mm. Yeah, it's like, all. Oh, just try, just go, go at it. Like, <laughs> that bad advice. <laughs> just no. press yeah. on, press on. That's how you <laughs> went about it. Yeah, if you think you made a boo-boo, go, go and correct that boo-boo. <sighs> you know, until you're satisfied with um, how it's going. Totally. Thank you, guys. By the way, um, I, I'm not sure, Bobby, did you set a timer for this one? Are you kidding? I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, how much time do you think went by? Because we've done a lot. I think, yeah, maybe just give it like two minutes and then uh, people can still hop in. And okay. Two minutes. Yeah, I gotta okay. figure a better method for that timer because I, I like the idea of everybody can see a very visible timer on screen, but I can't hear the timer, so I'm not really reminded. I'll figure it out um, in the upcoming ones.
we went we did not went over too long somebody mentioned that we've been around like 10 minutes now so that's oh. good oh cool thanks yeah thank you somebody. for what's that thank you somebody yes Okay, well, our little timer says one minute, so we'll just finish it off. My person is dancing with a ghost. I, I get the person's response because um, the first time I, I saw you paint K, like in, in the magma, I was impressed, like your color picking. It, it was just like, how? <laughs> it's oh, magic. No, I think it's just because, like, I'm on a painting mode, like, recently, just for, you know, work and stuff. It's just been a lot of painting and, like. All right. Uh, why don't we go on to the next one? Okay. Ten minute pose. Starting now. Starting the timer. Ooh. Have you been stylizing, Bobby? I didn't see your last one. I know. Totally called me out on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay. Stylizing activate. Stylizing thinking. Thanks for keeping it keeping it honest. Oh, I like if you don't want to stylize. No, it's great. I do want to stylize. I just forgot and then um you saying that is like, oh shoot, yeah, I totally said that. And Only because you said that you wanted to stylize. Yeah, it. no, you're right. Totally. There's a question on Slido from Kozu. Uh, how does an artist subsidize when working on a big project? And when or how does the artist let go of the reins and trust the other artists to help on the project? Or help to, to do the project? You take your ego out of the way and you tackle it like this is a team effort, you know, in any uh, project, like especially in movies. Yeah, it's definitely a team effort and uh, everybody has something good to contribute. And if they don't, then they're out of the group. And it's a very, um, it's a very tough, but very warm and welcoming industry, you know, a lot of passionate people. I wonder what the person means by sub subsidize. Yeah. Do you have any idea, Patricia? No, oh, it's a slide of question, so I'm not sure. I can't type back. But uh, Kozu, if you're out there, what do you mean with sub <laughs> subsidize? <laughs>
This is a, a previous question from Kozu. I was wondering if you may consider doing an Australian mammal 90 Mac. Let's put it on the list. <laughs> we'll put it on the list. What was the last one? The last one, the last suggestion was a great one. I, I All I remember was like just thinking, oh, that's a really good suggestion. Oh, the Victorian fashion? Yeah, thing? yeah. Time periods? I think Focus that on one clothing. is really cool. That's something I would love to learn more about too, is like specific periods of fashion. I remember when we were doing Lightbox Expo and I was moderating a talk with a bunch of um, costume designers on there and they were talking about specific books and all of them were like, yep, that book, yep, that book. You know, and it's like these books where it gave a really wonderful um, history of of fashion, or at least of European fashion. I forget what that book was called now. Four minutes. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm actually really into uh, the Victorian time period as well with the fashion. I just bought a book from um, uh, Janet Arnold, Patterns of Fashion. And that's why you'll see like this construction of the garments and everything. Really, really nice uh, oh. to see. Ooh. That sounds really great. It shows like, and it actually explains cool. how it's constructed and how you put it on as well. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, for me, I, I just bought it for the patterns. Uh, oh, okay. I want to make an, an attempt. <laughs> That's awesome, Patricia. I, I want to see that book. I yeah, will send you a picture later on. Oh, we have an answer back from Kozu. They said maybe that's the wrong word. I use subsidize as I mean to split away amongst more people. Oh. Well, that seems like a managerial kind of question. Um, I think the, the thing that we can relate to with that is, is when we're making our animated comic book which later became our TV show on Amazon Prime. Um, and the way that we split things up, I feel like we just kind of talked about it and just asked like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Okay, and then everybody kind of like talked about the thing that they want to do. And that's how we kind of split it. But that was with a much smaller group. So it's a lot easier to do that when you only have four people. Um, larger groups I honestly I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm the right person to answer that because I haven't been in that kind of situation where I'm allocating all these uh, roles for various artists like I could speak about just generally how I allocate things for the various people that you know work with me at um, the different stuff that I I'm a part of 
for that, it's <laughs> it's very much like, uh, I don't know what you're going to be doing, but I want you on the bus. <laughs> and that's pretty much it, you know, like, uh, <laughs> and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. I, for me, that's that's actually important for me when I am on something that I haven't figured out yet. Uh, if there's going to be change, I anticipate that there will be change. I make sure to tell everybody to get ready for the change. Like this is the plan now, but this is probably not the plan later. Because we're going to try and then we're going to see. Um, that's what makes a lot of the best plans. Instead of, I've never done this before, yet we'll plan out every little step we're going to take. That doesn't make sense to me. All right. Um. Yeah, and sometimes in a crew, when you're put on a crew, they know what your strengths are, and then they'll, you know, they'll allocate based on that. And then you can also you know, express what you're interested in, you know, and if the crew's cool enough, so they'll give it a try and put you on there. And then if it really isn't working, they take you off of it. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you, good job. All right, see you later. Right. The good, yeah, it's all. When you do horrible, <laughs> they tell you, good job. So, well, and if they have the time, you know, then they will train you. Yeah, true. Oh, we're out of time. That's it. Yay. There we go. And almost started stylizing that. I feel like I want to do work on that a little bit longer. All right, last pose. Last uh, 10 minute pose. Starting now. What a great one to finish it off with, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. Challenging, but cool. I feel like I need to know dance moves if I was going to wear this outfit. Hmm. No? I feel like it would be expected of me. Because <laughs> that's just too cool. I can't rock that stuff. I don't want to style it. Yeah, I'm gonna style it. I'm gonna end it off with one oh. where it's like I know where this is going. I'm just gonna just do a simple, cool drawing and hopefully stylize no, yeah. him a little bit too. Yeah, this is fun. So when I gotta like stylize and color and all this other stuff, jeez. That's a lot. I gotta get some practice. It was it was fun trying, but uh, yeah, I need more practice on that. It's hard. Which is probably a good, you know, kind of time to also remind everybody that, yeah, it's supposed to be hard, and it doesn't matter if you did bad drawings. It doesn't matter if you don't like the drawings. Exactly. You did them. And that's the tough part. Most people, they don't do them. And uh, if there was a multiverse out there, like out of a thousand versions of you, probably only five of them did it. And now you're in the top, like, you know, 0.5% of all those versions of yourself in the world. I, that sounds weird. I think about that kind of stuff. <laughs> like when I, you know, am uh, doing something difficult or you stick into something that's, that's difficult, I generally, I think like, okay, well, I'm one of the top percentages of Bobbies out there in the multiverse, so let's keep going. I like that. Percentage of the multiverse. 
<laughs> it sounds so weird. It sounds so much more like, this makes so much sense in my head. And then I start to say it, and it's like, as it's coming out, I'm like, what am I saying? I sound like, kind of like a crazy person. No, Bobby, you're not crazy. No. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> no, we're just focusing. I know, I know. Just kidding. Just so funny. <laughs> I'm actually really excited this week. I'm going to be meeting up with um, uh, the students of my speed sketching course, um, oh, the cool. artists that signed up. There's only a few, right? I only opened the spot for like a tiny few. Actually, it's only four people. Um, but each week, I'm going to be sketching with them. I'm going to be drawing with them, kind of like this with Magma, right? They'll do the... Uh, the course that I have on schoolism, but also we'll be meeting to sketch live. So I'm really excited about that. Actually, somebody's from Copenhagen uh, in one of the, as one of the uh, students and everything. I miss Copenhagen. Yeah. Um, the person was saying that they've been to like one of the schools and workshops when we were out in Copenhagen. There's a question. Uh, I wonder how you guys deal with uh, rejection from contractors. Never happened yet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> rejection? <laughs> What's that? Um, you know, like it's luckily it hasn't been often. And like when they do, it's kind of like oh, they got to rewrite the script or, but it's not really rejection. Bobby, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? A lot of times it's like you think you've been rejected because you actually don't know. And then you question it. Because uh, like I said, it's a lot easier to tell somebody that has an open-ended contract, they're not full-time with you, that you did a great job. See you later, right? And w when that happens, it's like, did I get fired <laughs> or did I actually do a great job and they wanna see me later? Uh, it's funny and you may just question it. Like this morning, or not this morning, recently there was a job where, um, the person was telling, was telling, okay, I hope you don't mind, like, I won't say any details, but telling you, like, oh, yeah, this, this job is going to happen, but not right now, and then we don't know, and then, like, like, recently, you got a text from that person going, oh, yeah, it's still happening, just want to let you know, and then we're like, oh, shoot, okay, yeah, that, that was real, it happens a lot, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's so many moving parts in like a movie that, you know, you can't take these things personally and yeah. Yeah, just, you got to keep going. You got to. Um, I'm trying to think like when the last time we had, hmm, there's not really rejection, rejection, but just. I got a straight up rejection, <laughs> but it was for a good reason. Like, um. I was working on the Ghostbusters and they asked me to stay on. I said, I can do like two days out of the week 
or something like that and i need this day off and and then they're like no that's not gonna work well that's I, I just kind of rejection that's like your your schedule rejection you know? yeah but it still hurt because <laughs> i was like ah you could you don't want to make you 50 bucks exemption for me is that what you're saying <laughs> With the rejection. Yeah. Wow, that's such an awesome. You're doing a whole face and everything. All right. I'm not doing that. I'm no, not my follow. plan actually failed, so I'm just going to go with whatever. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you got your clothes going on cool and all. Yeah, there's another project. Um, I think this is in November. I feel like I got kicked off of it, but I'm not sure. So it kind of comes with the territory. Uh, and I tell you this so that hopefully when it happens to you, you could be like, yeah, it kind of happens to everybody. And then you could feel a little bit better about it. Uh, Anthony had uh, some advice uh, given to him for rejection, and oh, that's you yeah. have to understand that you helped him real to, to to realize it. That's oh, what was it? <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to understand that you help help them realize, uh, and that's not the direction they want to go. Yeah, that's yeah. a healthy way to look at it. Mm. Very balanced way to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, that is so true because sometimes you're not right for the, you know, particular project, not the right style. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I deal with it a little differently. I just kind of go, well, that's not, that's not going to be important to me because I, I don't have control of that. Right. Right. I, so when I felt like I got rejected, I just said to myself, um, well, did you try your hardest, Bobby? You know, did you put in the time and the effort and and tried your hardest to think about things logically as well? And yeah. my answer was yes. So then I, I'm like, all right, then that's cool. You know, that's that's all you can do. We did a good job. Doesn't matter if we got fired or not or let go. You know, I'm not sure if I got let go, but that's what I kind of thought. Uh, just part of the business, part of the business. Yeah. I love this question. <laughs> I love this question from Anna. Do you get offended when people treat your art as a hobby, not a career? <laughs> no. Because huh. they don't know that it's actually a good career, right? It's like, just let them like roll with what they you know there's no point in yeah you know over that um, i don't get offended at all um but it definitely helps because i i feel like i'm successful at my career you know if i wasn't successful in my career then i i it would sting more <laughs> yeah that's just the honest kind of truth right yeah. Like you're trying. Did you really need to say that? <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> um, time is up. We could keep going a little bit longer if you feel like it. Your your sketch there looks amazing. I don't know if you want oh, to do no, a little bit more. On. We could go on to the next one. Or is this the last one? This is the last one. Oh. Do you want to remind everybody that Every Wednesday is Life Drawing Day. It's the Life Drawing 90-Minute Art Challenge class. Uh, so join in for the next one. And you could go right now, subscribe to the channel.
before you forget so you can find your way back easier. And also you can see that there is another one already lined up for next week. You could go to that one and just click set reminder. And that's all you need to do and then you'll have a nice little reminder as, uh, as we approach the next life drawing class and just stay in it. You know, that's the thing. It doesn't matter if your drawings look bad or if they look great, that's great. You know, it's really about staying in it, being consistent, because that is what's going to get you to that next level, really. And, of course, if you want some steroids on that learning, some good healthy steroids, I should say, uh, I also teach a class, speed sketching, animals uh, with me, where we sketch animals, but a lot of the philosophies, a lot of the practice can pertain to any subject. Yeah. So then, did you want to keep going, Kay, or you want to, are you good? No, I'm just chilling. Okay. All right, well, awesome job, everybody. Awesome job, Kay. Oh, thank you. It's so much fun drawing with you. It's so much fun. Likewise. I miss Massey too, but it's so much fun drawing with my wonderful partner in life. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to the mods, especially for always doing such a great job, and for the Empress mod herself, Patricia, <laughs> for being here and helping me. Uh, helping us, uh, you know, navigate through all the questions and everything. Uh, Lightbox Expo happens in October. I know it's early right now, but you want to get prepared because you do not want to miss Lightbox Expo. You'll see people like Francisco or Anthony Francisco there. You know, you'll see people like me there, like Kay there, all sorts. So uh, tune in or keep up to date and, and see us at Lightbox and all that other good stuff. All right, enough talking. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye, everyone.